So we were talking about the different personalities, the supreme personality of Mahavishnu and the verse 5. So in continuation with the verse 5, so where we stopped with Swayambhu Shambhu Raditya Pushkaraksho Mahaswanaha. After that we have to start now. Now we will go with that. Anadhi Nidhano Dhata Vidhata Ta Thadhuruttamaha. So we will see one by one what are all the names, what are all the personalities, what has been described here from these beautiful namas. Anadhi Nidhanaha. That is the nama which is now following. Now what is Anadhi? Adi Antaha, which brings out the Anadi. Anadi means there is no beginning, there is no end. So we cannot say there is an end for Vishnu Vataram because the Vishnu Vatar will go because we are yet to get the Kalke Vataram. For us, we understand these Dashavataras were important Avataras for us. But as I told you, in the Bhagavatam, there are so many avatars which have been given. And these avatars will continue as perennial. They are not going to stop. See, what does this mean to us in our reality is, avatars means our role is going to be continuous. So there is no way that you can escape from these roles because you have to apply a different type of roles as you go on and on and on. So you're not going to have the same role. So these avatars are the different roles. They are like the river flow. They are like a perennial. They go on and on and on and on. So they are not going to stop because as and when there is a balance needed in this universe, these avatars will always come. So they will always flow in such a way that they can come out and balance the dharma. That's what it says, right? Yada yada hi dharmasya glani hi bhavati hi bharata abhyuttana madharmasya tadatmanam srijan megam paritrana ya sadhuna vinasha ya chabushkrata dharma samstapana ardhaya sambhavami yuge yuge. I will take birth again and again. I will come to establish the dharma. So it is the word. I, I feel that verse is a very positive statement given by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. It's a very positive statement. What does it mean? When there is somewhere there is a declining or a decay of a dharma, he has given a beautiful positive statement saying that I will come, I will appear. So that itself is a positive attitude for us because we need to have that to build up our own life because there is someone who is behind us. Who is that? Lord Krishna is there. So even the birth which has been given in the Mahabharatam and also the reference from Bhagavatam, it says, when he was born to Devaki and Vasudeva in the jail, we all know that Kamsa has put them, his, his own sister, because there was a asariri, that's a sound which the, from the angel's talk, what uh, the angel's sound was been listened by Kamsa. And Kamsa happens to have this in his mind saying that, oh, the eighth child of Devaki is going to kill him. So then he becomes different and then he acts differently. Then he puts them in the jail. So he tried to kill each child, right? So he doesn't want to keep any child there. So he is trying to kill all the child. All the seven child was being played by this guy. So the eighth child was born for Devaki and Vasudeva. That child was born with four arms. Devaki saw that. So Bhagavatam says very clearly, the child was born with four arms. And in the chest with the Lakshmi, and from his Nabi there is Brahma. It's a poor avatara what he showed. So what does it mean? It means that he has shown that I have come and descended in this earth. I am going to take this avatar. I am going to be here. So don't worry. So that was the one of the greatest courage what is given. What I want to say is he was Narayana before the birth. He was after that also, he was keeping that lineage and he was, he was keeping that uh, the perennial flow of that avatar motive, right? So 
what he came he came with the four arms then devaki is requesting are if you come with the four arms this kamsha is going to destroy you please then he reduces the two arms and he comes with only two arms out as a normal child he reduces himself and then he shows that and then and then we know that he goes to the uh, ayer party what we say that the brindavan where the child has been uh, transferred so then the the girl child comes from comes from the ishoda from from there to here and then that that's the transformation or transfer of the child happens now what is the understanding here krishna is supposed to be as per the record they say he lived for 125 years almost when he was in the war itself it is almost 80 years or something for krishna krishna when he was in the mahabharata war he was having 80 years or something his skin his his body never showed any physical shrinkage or anything like a old age type of a thing in his skin until 125 years this is what the commentator said what does it mean he doesn't have a beginning he doesn't have a end for it so what happened even when he is leaving back to vaikuntha see what happened those days when the people when the avatar is trying to finish their mission and then they are trying back going back to the vaikuntha usually the rishis are those days considered to be the pras people okay the pras meet and then they will run and they will ask what is the answer no they they may they may conduct the pras meet when he is traveling to vaikuntha and try to get some answers for some of the things what uh, krishna has done so i'm just giving you some idea where i'm just giving from the current situation so rishis were talking to krishna with regard to certain things what has happened in avatar so one of the rishi one of the person who is very close of krishna is called Ud- uddhava uddhava started crying saying that krishna i am going to miss your physical form you know see the convenience of being in the physical form is totally different because i can i can touch i can feel i can hug i can see you on all those thing i can hold your hand i can hold your leg all this beauty of your physical things are all there but now you finished your avatar and you are going back so who am i going to see again like this who am i going to meet again who am i going to have a very good close physical contact so this absence is there so krishna is telling uddhava you are so much learned person you are very very highly learned person you grieve for these things no 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 you know that avatars have got an objective they have accomplished their mission and then they are going back so don't worry and he gives a very good promise what is it i am going to stay in each letters of sri bhagavata purana so when you read a bhagavata purana it is nothing but it is krishna himself that's why they say even if you buy say for example if you buying a bhagavata purana when you are bringing it to your home that means you are bringing krishna to your home so that's why bhagavata purana he says each and every word every letter of bhagavata purana i am there so what does it mean so there is no beginning for him yes we understand also there is no end that's why even from the dwapara yuga still we are chanting his name even from treta yuga you are chanting rama's name we have not given up so it will go on and on and on and on there is nothing going to stop them that's why we say anadhi nitana hai so they are going to be perennial they are not going to stop they are like a river flow it will happen they will go on and on and on as long as they want to establish the dharma they will always come they will always try to give us the solution they will always give the guidance for us to go with that all right so that is very very important for us now in the perennial flow if we understand that the existence of the lord there is something which always there is a there is a blockage in the progress of our sadhana okay so this is applicable for any type of work whatever you are taking any type of work say for example even if you say i am working on a project i am working on a project management i am taking an education i am working on certain things on a daily 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 basis there will be some type of obstacles which might happen in your mind or in your way of progress 
what are they number 1 there are eight types of pro- eight types of obstacles which radha krishna shastri gal is identifying for the he says for yoga sadhana but i would say not only for yoga sadhana any sadhana for that matter for any sadhana these are all something which can happen in our mind also sometimes what are they number 1 laziness lethargy we say that lethargic or being lazy so all of a sudden you will build up this laziness we don't know from where it comes okay let us take our own time let us do it still we have time still we have time we keep postponing so there is always that laziness in our mind okay so number 1 so laziness is one of the obstacles what can happen number 2 there could be some even the physical problems what is called vyadhi right even if you are getting some small small attack or small cold flu fever gone you are down and your mind is down and everything so this is the second type of obstacle where you have a problem the third one is called there is no control of your mind okay so you are you are tra- you are you are careless about your controlling of mind you just sit down and you want to do it then your your mind start thinking about many things no mind control for you that means you are not concentrating on the work probably yes so we have that this is one of the one of the problem which we encounter when we do any sadhana number 4 you may even have you can be called as mr doubt because you can doubt everything whether this is correct whether i am doing correctly whether i am getting this correctly whether this process is correct whether i am doing accurate all these things may come they take and collect on your mind so that's basically one of the obstacles what you can definitely have next one anavasti they say anavasti mean avasti means what your mind is not in a but you know it's always in perturbing position so it is always been in a disturbance it's always disturbed you are not having the your senses and mind is always disturbed by something so it is some in the avastha then the next one is called carelessness ashraddha you may have ashraddha that you don't want to take sincerity in working on it and then you may also have you know carelessness and then you have insincerity that is the last so why we are saying insincerity in what insincerity in the last attempt will be you start blaming even the system you blaming even the work what need to be done you blaming even the result ah even though i do what is going to happen so all these thing you with the predetermined your mind and or you with the prejudgmental notion you start working on it already it is going to be negative that's what you will try to work so these are some of the obstacles which comes into the sadhana which says these type of sadhana these type of obstacles what is appearing for your uh, as an obstacles for your sadhanas need to be rectified so one who has got the ability to make the flow of your sadhana is vishnumurti so try to get his blessing so that you can get rid of all these obstacles what you encounter so why i want to just bring it because these are definitely some of these are very much applicable for even our work day to day life so we have so many things which are very much practically applicable today because any work we may have we may encounter all these type of obstacles which need to be got rid of because we need to know it should be a positive approach what we need to know that's what i was saying that the word which is given by lord himself is a positive statement for us that we need to always think that the lord is with us and he is going to help us in working on all those things so that is what we say as anadi nidana anadi nidana so the next one is called dhata dhata means that who upholds who upholds in another way we can also say who has planted the important important aspects or important principles implanting the important thing so what did vishnu murti planted in this universe is nothing but he has planted the brahmadeva in this universe 
right? So he has given Brahma Deva because we know that from his Nabi there is a lotus, right? From his Nabi there is a connection of a, uh, the lotus stem and then the lotus is there and on the top of the lotus Brahma is there. So we know that. If you go to Ananta Padmanava Swami in Trivanandavaram, you can see this uh, Vigraha, that statue which shows that. Now, what is the understanding here? That he has given the Brahma for the creation of this entire universe. So that means he has planted the Brahma and he also given what? He has given some equipments for him to work on it. So to make this universe grow. Right? So it's very important. So that's why we have to always understand what do we plant? What do we implement? As a leadership, we say, for example, if this, this name or this Nama, is it applicable for a leader? Yes, of course, because you have to plant your good principles and your good actions. That will talk about your legacy after you. Right? Your followers will take that legacy and then they will pick you as a role model and then they will say, this is what I'm going to imbibe and I'm going to work on it. That's why you always remember there are only few people who are identified as the great leaders. Not everyone has a leader. Some, may everyone could be a good managers. There is a difference between a high level of a leadership and a manager. Managers, they know how to manage the work. They know how to manage the work. Only few people are identified as the great leaders. Still now we remember them because of their principles, what they have implemented. The principles and the actions, what they have given to us. Right? So they are understood from that. From that point of view. So there is one, I just want to recite one Thirukkural, which, which says about in Tamil, which says, Takkar, Takavilar, Edbavar, Avaravar, Echattaral, Kanapur. What is the meaning is, whether he is good or he is not worth, whether he is worthy or not worthy, is based on his actions. Based on, he is counted based on his actions. Whether he is great, he is very significant person who has done the very great contribution or he is not worthy, he is not noteworthy. Why? Because it is all based on the actions what you have left. The action speaks for you. So that action is what we implement here. That action is what we are going to plant here as a seed in this universe. So it is very important that we gather this dhataha means what? We need to plant a beautiful, beautiful principles and action. So our karma should speak. Our actions should speak. They should bring all the peoples together. So they should be attracted towards those actions. So that is what we say. This very important for data. Think, think about the Rama's legacy. Right? Rama's legacy of Rama. Lavakusha was there and then they are taking up and going. So we have greatest leaders who have lived and how they have they are also shown how to lead and how to bring the other descendants to them. So we need to know that. So that's what the Nama specifies to us. That what is called dhataha. Dhataha means one, one who uphold. Vidata. The next nama is called vidata. So what happens is when you have planted something, also you should see you nourish and to make, make sure it grows. Now, as I told you in the previous nama in dhata, he has planted Brahma. Now, Brahma needs to bring out this big universe. So for him, he needs instruments. He needs infrastructure. So infrastructures and instruments, like he has given, created the four Vedas. And based on the Veda, Brahma is going to create this entire universe. So he was given with all those clarities. In it, right? He was given with all those details. How we need to do, how we have to bring everything, and how we have to work out. What are all the rules and regulations in that? Right? So that is very important because it is not just a leader just giving you something. Just he is giving you some authority doesn't mean you should be defined with your responsibility. You should know what is your accountability. You should be given an adequate power to work on it. Everything is needed for you as being a dhat, vidhata. So you are given with an adequate infrastructure, instruments and everything for you to work on it.
So God provides you, divine provides you all those things. It is up to us how we use these instruments. How do we use our infrastructure? Now think about what is the infrastructure and instrument what he has given. Our infrastructure is our mind, senses, indriyana, and the indriyana are the infrastructure, including the atma is one of the infrastructure which is given to you. And what he has given, the body is given to you. That is the instrument which where you are going to plant everything and then you have grown. So what is our main purpose? We have to work in such a way we bring out our divinity, our divine quality, right? So there is one, one, uh, one time, there was, a, I don't know whether I referred this, but definitely it is worth to even repeat it again and again many times. There was one talk where Swami, we were sitting in, I think so it's in the Brindavan or some, where with the students, uh, Satisai Baba was sitting and then there was a question to the students asking them, what is the purpose of your life? So everyone saying that, Oh, the purpose of your life is some, some of the students, some of them thought, some devotees were also there. Some of them thought, okay, you have to live happy. Okay. Then some thought, okay, you have to help others. Okay. Some told doing charity. Some told doing service. Some doing namasmarana. Like I have to chant God and then some said, okay, divinity. All these things. So he was listening to all. And then he said, okay, all these things are not correct. The purpose of your life is return back to God. You have to come back to divine. You have to come back to God. So that is your purpose of life. So that means what? You have been given with an instrument. God is observing. God has given you. The divine has given you everything to work with. So what is your way? You work your way to reach him back. You work your way. To attain him back. That is the goal, what you have to do. But the problem is we deviate from that path and then we forget our divinity. We forget that we are going, we are supposed to reach him. Then we work on some other objectives in our life. So this is the problem. So what we need is infrastructure is given to us, but we need to know how we need to work with that. So your infrastructures need to be worked in a proper way so that what you do, you attain the God, you attain the Lord. All right. So that is what we say, Vidatha. So the next word is a very familiar word, which talks about Dhatu Uttamaha. Dhatu Uttamaha. So what is Dhatu? Dhatu means that is the basic fundamental element. Fundamental elements of the body. So what they Dhatu do, they hold our body. And then they create, right? They, they give you the body's infrastructure, the flow. Everything is connected with that. So we know that. So how they are very much connected and with the physiology, how they work with the physiology and everything. Now, if Dhatu's function is so much excited, think about who created this Dhatu, who is the, who is the primary of all these Dhatu. From where you got all these Dhatu, from where did you get your infrastructure? From where did you get this body? From where your Atma came into your body? How did you get your Jiva? How did you get into the structure? Why you have been called with certain name? Why you have been born in certain way? Why your body physical appearance in certain way? So God has given something for some purpose. Why we are here? Am I right? So there is some way that we has given because... If you say all these things, Mula Prakriti and everything, he is the primary energy who has given all these infrastructure from where everything emanates. So that's why we say he is Brahma. He is the primordial energy. From where we are getting everything. So from where and he is being the primary, you are getting it. That's why if you say about all the Dhatus, whatever Dhatus we know, like Rasaru, Rasa, Rakta, Mamsa, Medha, all those things, so among all this Dhatu, there is Uttama Dhatu. There is a Uttama Dhatu. What is Uttama Dhatu? That Dhatu is from where you are getting all the energy in your body. That Dhatu is the primary Dhatu. From where you are getting everything. That's what it says. Dhatu Uttama. This universe is formed from that Dhatu. From that particular basic element. So from that basic element, your everything has emanated. So that is what we are saying as Dhatu Uttama. So that 
brings the end of that verse number 5 and let us move to verse number 6 the verse number 6 says aprameyo hrishi keshah padmanabho maraprabhu vishvakarma manustvashta stavishtah staviro dhruvah aprameyo hrishi kesho not rishi okay so some people will pronounce it rishi it is not rishi it is hrishi keshah padmanabho maraprabhu vishvakarma manustvashta stavishtah staviro dhruvah so let us see the uh, nama one by one so we understand the beauty of these namas here a prameyah a prameyah what is prameya that we can measure what is prameya that can that which can be defined what what is prameya means you can identify by something some attributes are there i can understand what it is right you can comprehend something that is called prameya a very simple example what is the prameya we can say so simple way a logical understanding or logical way of understanding a deduction we say say for example i am just i am just passing by and then i see a smoke all right so when i see a smoke i should say okay a smoke is there there should be a fire i have a prameya so i am understanding that there is a logic there is evidence there is something which i am seeing it same way i can measure it i can understand i can define i can evaluate everything now what i am saying is divine vishnu is a prameya one who cannot be comprehended one who cannot be measured you cannot bring a meter scale and say that this is the level of him. if you want to bring him and find the size of him he shows himself is dark and within the dark itself he shows that he is big as in the vamana rupa so if you think okay he is going to be like a animal only then he comes like a animal and a lion and a human being are he is going to be like a human being uh, like a animal or something else he, he comes like a fish so you we can't even comprehend what type of uh, what type of avatars what type of things he is going to show out right because sometimes it is beyond understanding what his actions are i'm say, so what i'm saying is not even with the rupas not even with the lavanyas and whatever it is but even if we don't understand his his actions what he is going to do a very good example a very good uh, incident which happens with uh, in mahabharata that krishna was sent as a messenger by pandavas because krishna krishna is supporting the pandavas and we know that he wants to stand with the dharma dharmam said so with the with the dharma said so he said okay so then pandavas are saying that let us go and ask them whether because we have finished what are all the conditions they have given right so they have told that you have to live in the forest for some years and then one year like ajnana vasa and everything he has done so after that they are saying okay we have completed whatever they have given the condition we have lived accordingly so now it is the time that they have to return our kingdom back indraprastham or so then they going for that messenger as a messenger krishna is going to represent the pandavas and then want to talk now this message has gone to gaurava side gaurava side is uh, shakuni is sitting and then everyone now come to know that he is coming now shakuni is saying are ko like see krishna is coming so it is better that have a friendship so that you call him and then he, you can bring him to our home and then you can give him the treat and whatever you want so that you know like based on that we can always negotiate and we can always try to do it so what we want to do so strategically they were planning and everyone so everyone in this ka on that uh, on that country everyone is ready because they want to welcome krishna they all know some of them they know he is divine some of them know that he was he was uh, because he has done some miracles and all so some of them witnessed that so they are all eager so krishna is walking in the street he has to suppose because tomorrow the next day only he is supposed to get into the palace and talk about all this uh, peace treaty messenger terms and all these conditions and everything 
Now the first day, the previous day is walking on the street and then where Duryodhana coming with the Purnakumbha and he is standing outside the palace and he is saying, Krishna, come, 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 you have come here, come on, come on, come on. You have to come and get into my palace, you know, see, see the palace, I have got the beautiful ballads for you. We have beautiful rooms for you, excellent, delicious food will be served and all those things. Krishna is laughing, he never even said yes or no. And he, even, he never even accepted the Purna Kumbha and he is walking. Then there is another big man who is, a, who is having is a very lavish palace and all. He says, Hare Krishna, don't worry, you can come to my house. I am a very neutral person. I am neither this nor that. Don't worry, you can come here. Krishna is laughing. Then the next guy is also saying, I am having Purna Kumbha. Come Krishna, come Krishna, you can stay in my home. Nothing doing. Krishna is keep on walking, walking, walking all the way. All the palaces have been, all been totally neglected by Krishna. So he is walking all the way down, down, down on the street. And all the, on the end of the street, he saw a very simple hut. It was a simple hut which is there. And then by seeing, not even asking, not even asking the permission for that fellow, who is the owner, he just getting into the hut, getting, entering into the hut and he is asking, then only he is asking, keep on entering and he is asking the question, whose hut is this? All the people who called Krishna, they said, Krishna, come to my home, come to my home. So this is a great palace where you can have all the comfort. Now see, Krishna ignored all the palace. Because he is himself a Raja. He is the Raja of Dwaraka at that time. He is himself a Raja. He could take the luxury life. But he avoided all those things. He is entering into the hut and keep on questioning, whose hut is this? And there is a sound which is coming from back saying that Krishna, that is your hut. Krishna, that is your hut. That is your house. That is your hut. You have to understand the difference in the devotion here. People say, my house, come in Krishna. Person says, Krishna, that is your house, go. Krishna said, oh, is this my hut? I, I didn't know when Vasudeva has built this hut for me. And the person who told is nothing but Vitura. The Vitura was standing near and he's saying, Krishna, this is your hut. Get in, the news me. So then Krishna goes into that house. He lived there for that whole day. And next day, from there only, he goes as a messenger to that Gaurava's uh, palace. Now, the understanding is you can't cognize, you cannot comprehend what he is going to do. Because everyone thinks Krishna will go for the palace. Krishna will accept certain things because he might need luxury. He wants to live because he's already a Raja now in Dwaraka. So he has to have the comfort and all those things. But no, Krishna walked into a small hut because he was, he was attracted towards the devotion of the devotee. So he was gone into with that quality. So why I'm saying is you can't comprehend the Lord's qualities here. So the divine quality is beyond comprehension. So that's what we say, aprameyaha. We cannot bring out saying that this is the measurement. We cannot say this is the definition for him. So he is beyond our comprehension or measurement. Aprameyaha. Krishi keshaha. Krishi keshaha. What is Krishi keshaha? One who has control of senses. Who is the Lord of senses? He is the Lord of senses. So that means one who knows how to control the sense organs. Because he is the Lord. He knows how to control it. See, even in the, uh, I think most of you should have seen the portrait of uh, that Gita, Gito Upatesha. There it shows there are five white horses and then there are some yolk, like there is a leash. On the, uh, what do you say, there's a rope which has been tied with the horse neck and then Krishna is holding that, right? And the chariot is there and the chariot one, on the top of the chariot is Arjuna who is standing and Krishna is giving the Gita Upatis. So this, this picture is very famous. Everyone should have seen that. There's a beautiful analogy what uh, I think most of the, most of the avatars and most of the great commentators have given that. The chariot is nothing but your body. The chariot is nothing but your body. And the five horses, nothing but the senses. 
your your karmendriya and jnanendriya and they have been the rope is with whose control it is with the divine's control who is the divine divine is your atma so the divine is the atma who is controlling it if you if you have the divine path clearly right that paramatma i'm saying about paramatma is not atma means it's not about your individual atma not your lower self there is a higher self what i'm talking about that divine atma paramatma so what happens the arjuna as an individual low self surrenders to the higher self then the higher self leads your dasha indriyas in a controlled way so your body and dasha indriyas and everything comes under control with your individual atma being surrendered to the divine atma so why because he controls your senses so this is a beautiful understanding from that picture most of the commentators have given that so it's the same it is 100% same that we have we have this clarity of how how we control our senses right so it's very important so that is one one hearsay story which i heard about when ramakrishna paramahamsa so this is a hearsay story So when Ramakrishna Paramahamsa had some of the disciples who are sitting in front, and then he has tossed a small sugar candy into the mouth of the devotees, the mouth of the disciples. Okay, and he wants to know what is happening. So there is a there is a, there is an understanding why Ramakrishna Paramahamsa is doing this. So he tossed that to each each of them. uh is one disciple and after 10 minutes he was trying to look at the candy what has been placed by him on their mouth so there say for example if there are 10 people right so when he looked at nine members all the nine members candies are all dissolved that means what they started tasting it right they started tasting it there's only one person's candy was neither affected it was same as what it has been put in his mouth and that person is nothing but his name is narendra nath later he has become swami vivekananda so this is the hsk story but what i am saying is the genuinity of understanding the story is one who has a control in his own senses one who has a control in his own senses can have can lead their objective very clearly so that's what narendra has showed has demonstrated right so he has demonstrated saying that he can control he has a control unless i pay attention on the thing what is in my mouth it doesn't need to be dissolved so this why i am saying is this is very uh, very uh, beautiful point or a quality for any individual that we need to understand because our senses are always the thing which can drag you out so when we want to bring them to watch the divinity always think about krishna and then you think about how he has the control of all those ropes in his hand in the heart think about the gita upadesham uh, figure and then you will understand our senses are with his with his uh, control right so because he is considered to be krishi keshah next one is called bhagmanabah Bhagmanabha. Bhagmanabha means we know that it is the Brahma who is sitting on the top of the lotus, and this lotus is connected to the Nabhi of Brahma of Vishnu. All right, the Nabhi of Vishnu, and that is why to think about this. This represents the human human birth cycle, also, right? so we are also connected with our mother's umbilical cord that's why we say any creation from brahma will have some motherly relation any creation from brahma will have a motherly motherly connection because if you are a human being you have an umbilical cord which has to be uh, dissected or which has to be cut before your birth is happening and then you come out and then you are be given as a birth outside right so this is 
very clear evidence. That's why we say Brahma's creation. Why do we regard, regard this as a Brahma creation? Because Brahma is attached to the navel point of uh, Vishnu. So it is it is that lotus stem is basically the, the umbilical cord, what we understand. So this, this is the relation, what I'm saying about. This is the connection between the Brahma and Vishnu. What does this portray? Brahma is sitting on a lotus, right? So there is a there's an analogy about this. Brahma is sitting on a lotus. This lotus is basically called Kala Chakra. This is a time. So he's sitting on the time, the lotus, depict the time as the lotus. And then what happens? Brahma is sitting on it and then he creates what is called Srishti. Srishti is creation. Right? right? Srishti is creation. And based on what he is doing, he has been given with an instruction. What type of instruction? The infrastructure is Veda. So based on the Veda, as that knowledge, and he is creating. The creation, entire creation has been done by the Brahma. So that's what the connection between the Brahma and Vishnu. So we can see that the Brahma and Vishnu, how they are connected here. So this is why we say him as Badmanabha. Badmanabha. Amara Prabhu. So it is called Amara Prabhu. So well, it's a beautiful because he is Amaraha means he is for the devas. We, we know Sura and Asuras, right? So there are two peoples. One is one who is on the good side, another one, Asuras are for the bad side. So for the positive and negative. So positive side, they are called Amaras, and he is the leader of Amara. So that's why we say Amara Prabhu. Amara Prabhu means he is the leader of those good elements. He is the leader of good element and he is a destroyer of the bad element. So that is how it goes. Here I am just uh, reminded of a beautiful story uh, which is, I think which is narrated by uh, Swami in one of the one of the interview session or in a student session or meeting or something. So this, this story goes like this. There was a woodcutter who is cutting the woods and then he happens to do this, the wood cutting in a some, some sort of forest, which the, the forest is very much near to that one of the ashram there. So where there is a sannyasi, where is the, the sage, he is teaching okay, some of the slokas, especially he is teaching the Vishnu Sahasranama. Okay? So Vishnu Sahasranama. He is teaching Vishnu Sagastranama to his own students and then they are all chanting it. So this uh, this uh, guru is teaching that and it is a guru kulam and it is basically a be beautiful art from there. And then whatever they are chanting, this person is a woodcutter. He is not learned a person. He is totally illiterate. He is trying to listen it daily. And always remember what happens is whatever words we are very familiar this is what our mind picks up, right? So we, we, should, uh, we should understand this. Psychology of hearing is also like that. We are very much towards either we are related to a job or either somewhere we are related to something. Our mind will pick up those type of words very quickly, whichever the sound which comes in. And then it will be, it will be reminded in your mind. So when these people were chanting this word, right? When they are chanting Aprameyo, Rishikesho, Badmanabha, Amara, Prabhu. So this woodcutter, because you know he is a woodcutter, so for him what is easy is the Mara. So Mara means wood. So it is related to him. He forgot, he never used A, so he used Mara Prabhu. So he was saying, keep on saying other, other, other words and all, nothing went into his mind. He was picking up that word. Oh my God. So they are telling our own name, our own uh, profession's uh, word and all. So he picked up that Mara Prabhu. So it is instead of Amara Prabhu, he started saying Mara Prabhu, Mara Prabhu, Mara Prabhu. So he was chanting that. Daily he will come, he will say Mara Prabhu. Then he will start cutting all the wood and then keep on doing it. So this was going on. No one noticed him. Nothing happened. So one day, one fine morning, this fellow started and then he was cutting it. So the sage, the guru is supposed to come and then he has to cross this guy for some reason. He happens to listen to this fellow saying that Mara Prabhu. He is cutting every wood by saying Mara Prabhu, Mara Prabhu. 
Maraprabhu, Maraprabhu. Now Guru got annoyed. Oh my God, he is supposed to say Amaraprabhu. He is saying Maraprabhu. No, 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 no. This is so bad. He said, Oh my God, Narayana, 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 Narayana. Stop it, Woodcutter. He shouted, he yelled at the Woodcutter saying, Stop it. What are you blabbering? You are supposed to say Amaraprabhu. You are saying Maraprabhu. No, 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 no. This is utter nonsense. Don't say like that. Don't ever, ever, ever do any chanting at all. Told that sincerely, he made that uh, statement. He never he gave him any curse or anything. He just told him that. He was a little bit ang upset on that. And then he, he, he went back to his own ashram and then he went. So now the woodcutter was totally upset. Upset in the sense, he knows only that one word, which is Maraprabhu. Now, even that word, Guru has told him to stop. So, he stopped it. And then he, with the, you know, with all this dejection in his mind, and then he started, okay, my, maybe I am an illiterate. I don't even know what to do, what, what, what the way I need to say or anything. Then he was just keep on doing a cutting the wood as usual. And then he was keeping quiet and then he was doing it. And that night when uh, Guru was in his sleep, he got a dream. So Satchat Vishnu Murthy is coming up and he is asking him, what is, what is the problem? Why did you had a conversation with the woodcutter? So th this goes in his dream. And he says, oh, you know, you know that fellow, Swami, he is supposed to say Amara Prabhu. This fellow is saying Amara Prabhu. I am really, you know, taken aback. Maraprabhu means you are like a would do. Uh, it is not good. So that's why I am not going to tolerate. That's why because they have to do it correctly. They have to be corrected. Otherwise, they are going to say wrong. And then I told him, never ever do any chanting. Then Vishnu Muthi told, at least by saying that he was thinking about me. Now what happened is, because you thought that you are going to correct him, you, you started doing it. By now, he, is, he has totally stopped even saying that. Number one. Number two, you, you say that I am Amara Prabhu. Okay, good. And you say everything is my creation, right? Don't you not see that if wood is my creation, am I not that in the wood, wood also? Am I not that in the wood? Am I not that in the stone what has been graved? Am I not there in any idol what you are having, any metals what you have? You think everything is in my creation. Even the wood is the piece of a wood is in my creation. What is harm in saying I am the wood's leader? There is no harm in saying it. You have made a person who is at least thinking of me by saying something. You stopped him. You have done a big mistake. So by hearing this, the guru wakes up from the dream and he runs directly to the woodcutter and he fell down on the woodcutter's knees and said, Are, for you the approval has come directly from Narayana himself. Please chant whatever you know, no problem. So that's what, what this, this story was told by Swami. And then what, what is the meaning of this is, it doesn't matter how you utter the names. Okay, so it doesn't matter how you utter the names, how you are saying it. It is very important in what bhava you are saying it. If you are saying with the devotion, that definitely reaches whoever the supreme. It doesn't matter. Like Valmiki was given a name. He was, he was a hunter. He doesn't even know any names. Narada wants to give him a name. So he doesn't know. He showed him what is the, what is the thing which is nearby to you. He showed a tree and he said, Mara, Mara, Mara. Mara means the wood, it's a tree. So he said, okay, keep chanting that. Whatever you know, that is the name, what you know, keep chanting. He said, Mara, 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 Mara. So it became Rama. So Amara Prabhu, beautiful, beautiful story. What, what Swami says here is beautiful story. What, what is the emphasis what Swami he gives us here is it doesn't matter. Et bhavam tat bhavati. As you look at it, as you look, as you connect with the Bhagavan, as you connect with the divinity, that is what you are going to get. So it doesn't matter 
your bhava is very very important that doesn't mean that you can utter everything wrong no you have to have your own effort to correct it no problem but because of that don't get dejected saying that oh because it is a sanskrit i am going to say all wrong no it is i'm telling you see i have seen people struggled saying vishnu sagasana but later now their pronunciation and everything has gone up it is not because of i am teaching or someone teaching or someone teaching it is because the lord himself want to correct them the lord himself leads them in a correct way it's only thing is your sincere effort with devotion you want to say it he will bring you correctly he will lead you correctly he will show you the right way of going for it and you will get all those vibration properly because it is a very positive thing which we need to understand so here what i just want to connect this whether it is amara prabhu amara prabhu is the correct one so amara prabhu but what i am saying is it is the bhava which is very very important which swami always says bhava is important for you when you chant rather than it doesn't matter whatever the thing whatever you may be a pandit of three or four vedas you can be chaturvedi doesn't matter you can be chaturvedi doesn't matter you can do beautiful yagna doesn't matter but if your bhavam is not clear what happens right it is very very important about your devotion that you are putting it up so amara prabhu next one vishwakarma who is vishwakarma vishvaha idi karmaha vishwakarma vishwam means universe that who has created this universe that who has worked to work in such a way he has performed the duty so that the universe is an infrastructure given to you by him by whom he is the person who is called vishwakarma all right vishwakarma beautiful one beautiful so there was a character in mahabharatam there was a character by name vishwakarma who is considered to be a builder who built at the palaces and all he helped for the pandavas to create that indraprastha so indraprastha the palace what he has created see uh indraprastha palace was having so much of you know very magical impacts and all the magical movements were all there in the in that indraprastha palace when you read the mahabharatam you understand he is a, he comes from the he comes from the amara said but he comes from the sura said from the good but he created a palace with all the magical effects mayan is supposed to be mayan is another sculptor like that mayan is a sculptor his nature is itself he is from the asura side the nature itself is to create a magic but he created a palace for gauravas without any magical impacts or anything so when i say magical means like it will be like an a 3d uh, dimension something like that those days he has created right so you will see like the water flow will be there but there will be no water when some places you will see there is no water but you you really step in there will be water all these things created by vishwakarma on the, on the indraprastha palace and that's where the problem comes and all which goes in the mahabharata story with regard to that which is a is a different thing because what i'm saying is vishwakarma was one of the character in mahabharata also but here the reference to this is here we are talking about vishwakarma he means he is the person who has created the vishwam okay he has created the vishwam he has made the vishwam available as an infrastructure for us to work with the next nama is called manuhu 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 means there were so many you know we have different manus who have come for us that's what we call manvantara there are so many manus have been created that there are so many manus have been listed to us who has come from the brahma and they have they have ruled this universe okay so right now they say as per our as per our hin sanadana dharma we are also vaivashvata manuhu that's what the current manu is all about vaivashvata manuhu so this is the manu who, with whom we are currently living this is basically a periodicity of a classification of the vedic calendar so, so that's what the manu is all about so vaivashvata manu this is what we always say in the sankalpam also vaivashvata manvantare ashtavidam sigame kali yuge pratame bhate 
So even they say Kali Yuge Pratame Bhati. Pratame Bhati means what? Even in the Kali Yugam, we are in the Pratama Bhatam. Pratama Bhatam means in the first part only. So if we, if you divide the entire Yuga into four parts, we are still in the first part only. So that is what you are saying in Sangalpam. When you say in the Sangal Sangalpam Mamo Bhata, Samasta, Durda Chetvara, Sri Parameshwara Parameshriar, Sri Vishnu Pritam, Shubesh Obhane Magutya, Adya Brahmanaka. Adhya Brahmanaha, that means what? Your creation started from the Brahma. Adhya Brahmanaha, Svetavaraha Kalpe, Vaivashvataman Mantare. So these are all the things which you need to remember when, when you go to the temple or somewhere when the priest is saying the Sangalpam. What does he remind you is all this classification how you are now, where you are now. So Vaivashvataman Mantare, Kali Yuge, Pratame Pate, Jambu, then they will say Crown Chadipe. All those things, Ramanakaya Deepa, all these things based on the continent where you are, and then they will say the location and all those things. This comes up in your Sangal. Right? So, why I'm saying is Manu who means the person who has created and who has given the, the administration. The Manu is the person who is an administrator as per the Vedic calendar. Now, he here we are referring Vishnu Murti as administrator because he has created this universe and he is administrating every work. He has assigned the persons accordingly to work on individual departments. He has departmentalized. So these are the greatest departments what he has been given. So he has created the universe and then he has appointed Manu take care of the universe and work on all the rules and regulations, whatever it is. That's why Manu Dharma Shastra has come to us. Manu Dharma Shastra means it will give you the rules and regulations, what you need to follow, what is called Dharma, what is the path of evolution and how you need to do it. Correct? So it is very important. The other way of understanding Manu means it is talking about your mind. It is talking about mantra. So any mantra is also considered to be this another commentator, another view of saying that Manu. Manu means Manu who means manaha, manaha means mantra, hai. mantra means the word or a shabda or a sound or a akshara or a bijakshara, what you are using, chanting, which churns your mind. So it is by something like churning, that is called mantra, mantra, Man, manaha, trayati iti mantra, trayati means with churning your mind. So it has to be as a center axis. And it puts on a pressure on your mind and then it churns your mind. So that what happens? All those things, elements are getting out and then you, it has been totally centered and anchored it only with the mantra, with that shabdam. So you always relate with that shabdam. So what happens? Your mind collects and even if, before you uttering it, it will be merged with your even your breath or your activities or anything. Your mind will say that nama or say that mantra, such way it is being linked. The physiology itself will start, you know, reverberating or saying that vibration. So that is what we say as mantra. Mantraha, right? So mantra is also called mananaha. Mananaha is another reference for manu. So manu means, one way, one way of understanding is manu is about the administration. The other way is about talking about your mind. So, mananaha, so about your mind, controlling your mind. Right? So, manuhu. Next one, twashtaha. Twashtaha. Twashtaha means a person who can chisel, clean their extraordinary things and make it clear, make it shrink and make it clear. Okay? So, it's called as a twashta. So, what does it mean? Vishnu Murti. Is a person who cleans which is the negative adharma and makes the dharma to prevail and he makes the dharma to run. So whichever is opposing to that evolution, path of evolution, he will try to eradicate, he will try to make sure that it goes off, it wards off from its own way. Right? So this, this reminds of a beautiful statement by one of the famous sculptor whose name is Michael Angelo. I think most of you might know him. He, he is a very sculptor. He gives a beautiful quote. He says, whenever he sees a marble, an empty marble, because he, he, is, he makes the uh, sculpting work in the marble stones. 
He says, whenever there is a marble, when you show a marble stone to him, he says the statue, the original statue within inside that marble stone is revealed to me. So somewhere he has that vision. So he can see that original, the original uh, image of inside that marble stone. And he says, my, my only work is, they, are, they were asking him how you do a pub, very good sculptor, sculpting work and all. So he told, my only work is because the original, that image is already revealed to me. I'm trying to remove all the unwanted, uh, unwanted uh, places and unwanted stones and everything so that the original statue or original Vigraha is revealed out. So this is what even the great sculptor, see how, how clearly even in the contemporary world, the word Toksta very much fits with us. Right, very much fit with us. It is with the profession itself. Even for you, for a, as a leader, what is it? If you understand how to streamline your work, where is an unnecessary flow of your work? If you try to avoid it and make a stream flow of work in a straight way, you will win. So Twashta is very much applicable for us. As a leader also, we know that how we can apply it. So this is where we can understand how it is very, very much a contemporary quality, what we need to understand, Twashta. Stavishtaha, Stavishtaha, he come, Kapo, supposed to be a very big, very huge, he shows himself as a very huge, like a Vishwarupam, right? See, Krishna is giving the Upatesham, he is called Gita Acharyan, he is giving the Upatesham for uh, Arjuna, so say, sharing him with all the different uh, yogas and everything. But at the moment also, he was not very clear, saying that you, you are understanding so many things. I'm not very clear and about all those things. So then, still he was having this mind saying that I'm going to kill these people and all the sins are going to come to me and all those things in his mind. Then Krishna, Lord Krishna shows a Vishwarupam. Vishwarupa means he's showing that the entire universe is within him. And in that, he shows, he opens his mouth and he shows the entire Gaurava Sena, the entire Gaurava Sena, so many Akshoni Sena, There's so many, so many millions and millions of, uh, so many millions of uh, army side. And he, they can see that their heads are crushed and they are clinging to the teeth of Krishna. They're totally crushed and their body is hanging and clinging to the teeth of Krishna. And he showed, uh, and he showed it openly to the, to the Arjuna saying that, Array, I have already smashed them. You are nothing. You are not going to do anything now. Just you are going to kill the body. He has already shown him. Why I am saying is, if needed, divine can expand itself. Show who he is. If needed. So this is very great opportunity for us. Because if a chance comes, you explain. By an oppor opportunity, you can expand yourself and show what you are. So this is very, very great quality of Vishnumurti who has done this. As a Krishna, he has shown this to Arjuna to understand that Stavishtaha, because I am the universal form. Straviro Dhruvaha. Straviro Dhruvaha. So here Dhruvaha means he is a very senior person. Very, very senior person. He was always there. So why we say senior? Even if the world has totally shrunk, even the world pralaya has happened, the end of the world has been there. But we already saw him. There is no end, no beginning for him. So he is always, always there. He always remains there because he is the one who preserves and he takes us to the next, next generation or next yuga. And whatever he wants, he has to lead us. That's why he is considered to be the very great senior. So one who stays there, right? So we always say him. He has a great experience. He is a senior. So here, Lord Krishna or the Vishnu Murti is the senior most person who is available because he is always there for us to guide us. So this is what we understand from that verse. The beautiful verse, Aprameyo Krishi Keshaha, Badmanabha Amara Prabhu, Vishwakarma Manas Tvashta, Stavishtaha Staviro Dhruvaha. Okay. So with that, I stop here today. And then we will conclude here. So, Kaya Navacha Marasendriya Rva, Buddhyatmanabha, Prakate Subhavat, 
கரோமியக்கலம் பரஸ்மை நாராயணாயே தி சமர்ப்பயாமி எதக்ஷர பதப்பிரஷ்டம் மாத்ராஹீனம் துயத்வேத் தவம் சம்யராதேவ நாராயண நமோஸ்துதே விஷர்கபிந்து மாத்ராணி பதவாதாட்சராணி யவனி சாத்திரிக்கி சம்யஷ புருஷோத்தமா அந்யதாச்சரணம் நாஸ்திவமேவரணம் மம தஸ்மாத்ருண்யபாவே ரட்சரட்சனா ஹரி ஓம் தத்சத் இரிஸ்ரீராமகிருஷ்ணாபனமஸ்துஸ்திரஜாபிபாலயந்தேனமாேன மஹீமஹீஷா கோமனேபுசுபமஸ்து நித்தியம் சமஸ்தோகாஹினோவந்து 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 ஜெய்சாயம்